What are the key aspects of effective backstroke and what do they look like? Hi everyone, Andrew Sheaf here, helping you help your swimmers get faster. Today we're gonna to talk about upper body propulsion and how to use the arms to improve speed in backstroke. We're gonna go over what the different components are, we're gonna go over what they look like, and that way you'll know exactly what you're trying to help your swimmers accomplish, and when you have clear goals, it's a lot easier to accomplish them. The goal here is to really simplify the backstroke pull. Sometimes it can be really complicated, but when it comes down to it, swimmers need to move a lot of water backwards so they can move forward, and it's all about finding the most effective and the most efficient ways of doing so. Let's dive in. So the first key concept here is creating a giant surface area to move as much water backwards as possible. And so if swimmers are using a small paddle, it's gonna be a lot more difficult to do that. If they have a really big paddle, it's gonna be a whole lot easier. So if you watch here, swimmer's gonna set it up, and the whole arm right there is facing backwards, that whole forearm, that whole hand, and then it's gonna move straight backwards. So it's a much bigger surface area than if the swimmer was just using the hand. So again, the whole forearm is facing backwards, and water is moving straight backwards. So it's a much more effective way to interact with the water because they can create a much bigger surface area, which means they can hold a lot more water, which means they can move more water with each stroke. So the most important thing is setting up a position where they can orient the arm so that they can get that whole forearm facing backwards. That's gonna create the biggest surface area. That's gonna help them swim most effectively. Second thing we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at holding that position for as long as possible. So we'll watch from over the top. You can see this athlete here, that forearm, you can see at the bottom, is moving straight backwards for as long as possible. So watch the top, you can see her arm moving straight back as long as possible. She's, she's got as much of that forearm straight back all the way through the end of the stroke. And so, so not only is it important to create a great position, it's really important to maintain that position for as long as possible. So you can see here, she orients the arm backwards, it's pretty much straight out to the side here. So the forearm itself is facing straight back, pulling straight back all the way through the entire stroke. And so create a big surface area, move it back for a long period of time, swimmers are gonna move a lot of water. So pretty simple in terms of what they actually have to do. So again, moving all that water straight back throughout the entire stroke. So next piece, swimmers need to accelerate their hand as they move through the pull as well. And that's gonna build pressure on the water. That's gonna allow for more propulsion. So, so far they have to have a great surface area. They've gotta move it backwards for as long as possible, and they also want to accelerate through the pull. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So hand enters here, not moving very fast, and then you can see towards the end, it really accelerates. So right there, the hand speed picks up. So the hand and the arm are moving faster and faster as they go through the cycle. The goal is to try to accelerate the limb throughout to maintain and increase propulsion. The more effectively swimmers are able to do that, the more they're gonna get out of each stroke. So it's not just about what they do, how they do it matters too. So a key aspect, once they get the idea of setting up the stroke effectively and then pulling straight back for as long as possible, they have to learn to accelerate the hand through the second half of the stroke. So there's one more concept that I'd like to communicate and that's the idea of opening the armpit to set up the stroke and then closing the armpit to execute the stroke. And so if we see right here, swimmer enters, and their armpit is really open in that there's a lot of space in there. So that means the major muscles of the chest, the pecs here, and then the muscles of the back, the lats here, are on stretch. They're opened up and they're not contracted. Then as the swimmer pulls through, you can see that space close, and that indicates that the strongest muscles have closed the armpit, have executed the pull, and that's what you really want because you want the strongest muscles doing the work as opposed to weaker muscles. So again, the setup here, the armpit's open, there's a lot of space, and then as the swimmer pulls, that armpit closes because of the contraction of those really strong muscles. And so if you have swimmers that are swimming ineffectively and they're just kind of sculling out here, you'll see that the armpit never really closes or doesn't do so in a pretty effective manner. And so it's a really key concept because swimmers have to set up the stroke effectively in terms of creating a forearm facing backwards, but they also have to do so in a way that keeps the armpit open so that they can use those strongest muscles to move the arm straight back and then accelerate that hand as well. So you have all these different components working together and working in concert in order to create a lot of propulsion. Swimmers have to create a large surface area with the arm. They have to move that surface area straight backwards so that they can move forwards. And the more that they can accelerate the limb, 
the faster they will move forwards. And the way that they power that is by using the strongest muscles of the upper body. They do so by setting up the stroke in a way that opens and lengthens those muscles. And then when they pull, those muscles are able to do the work. So while backstroke pulling can seem really complicated, ultimately it's fairly simple. Get a big surface area, move it straight back, and accelerate it straight back. Usually when you do that, that allows for the armpit to open and close so that you can use the strongest muscles of the body. Rather than focusing on down sweeps, up sweeps, or other nuanced concepts, focus on the big picture of what needs to happen for swimmers to move forward. And ultimately, you'll become much more effective at designing interventions to help swimmers learn these skills. And when they can learn these skills, they're going to swim a whole lot faster. The legs serve two key functions in backstroke when swimmers are trying to swim fast. One, they create some propulsion, and two, they can help shift the body from side to side and help swimmers with their rotation. Rotation is going to be a key part of the stroke because it allows the shoulders to recover easily and also pull more effectively. So if rotation is not happening fluidly, it's going to be a lot more difficult for swimmers to swim fast. So we'll take a look at what the legs are doing and what the kick is doing to serve those two functions. So the first thing we'll pay attention to is creating propulsion with the legs. And what I want you to notice is how the hips sag just a little bit. And what that allows swimmers to do is to bend the knee more without breaking the surface of the water with the knee. And so if you see here, right here, there's actually a pretty good surface area that's facing backwards. And that's because he can let the hips sit down a little bit and let the knee come up forward. And you can see if the foot uh, right there is facing backwards pretty well and then getting flicked right up to the surface and right you can see that the foot flick through right there. You get that last snap of the ankle and, and the last bit of propulsion. And so what's happening with the kick here is that there is a pretty significant knee bend, but then it snaps through all the way through and it's almost like a whip that comes from the hip. And so the other thing to watch here is watch this left leg as it recovers, it doesn't bend. It recovers straight back. So that way the hip is moving, the, the hip is moving the upper leg it comes straight back and then it whips forwards and that's what creates the knee bending action rather than trying to consciously bend the knee. And then the knee's coming forward and the ankle is following and then it snaps through and whips through. So it's definitely a whipping action and that's set up by kicking pretty much straight down with the kick. So right there, the kick straight down and then whips it back up. So it's a kick that comes from the hips. It goes through the knees and then it finally goes through the ankles where it kind of snaps through with that finish. So propulsion here is not about just kicking through the hips or kicking through the knees. It needs to happen through all three joints, the hip, the knee, and the ankles. And it's a wave that travels down the body. And it's set up by this straight leg recovery right there. And then the hip starts moving, the knee starts moving, and then the ankle starts moving. And that's where you get that whipping action that's going to create a lot of propulsion. And what we can see here is the same thing is happening at speed. You can see there the hips are sit, sitting down a little bit. There's that knee popping forward. And then you're going to get the whipping action. So right there, pretty solid knee bend. But you can see how much of that ankle is facing backwards. So he can kick backwards. And then he's flicking that with that ankle and that feet. And you can see the whipping action of the foot here right there really snaps up. But then after the kick, he's recovering that leg straight down back to the next cycle. So right there, you can see the leg recovers straight and then whips back in the other direction. So it's a huge whipping action. And this is happening. This is a 50 meter race. This is happening at very high speeds. It's not just at slow speeds. It happens at all speeds. And so swimmers have to learn how to get that whipping action and recover with the leg straight and then flow from the hip to the knee to the ankle to get a ton of propulsion. And so a key skill in backstroke kicking here. The other issue I want to address is how the backstroke kick can aid in rotation in backstroke. So if we watch this kick with the left leg here, he's going to kick up to the surface and that's going to push his left hip down. And so it's going to help him rotate to the other side. So right here, he's rotating on his right side. He's going to kick with that left leg right there and that's going to instantly pop him towards the other direction. And so it really helps to assist the side to side shift. We can see the same thing on the other body. So he's on his left side. He's pulling with the left leg. And if you watch the right leg, it's underneath here. He's kicking up. And then right at the end of the kick, that's going to push the hip down. And you can see shifts over to the other side. And so the arms are going to do that to some extent. But if you can do the arms and the legs and the motion of the torso, it's going to be a lot easier to shift from side to side. And so again, right there, he's kicked 
that left leg right there and snaps through and the other comes to the other side. And then on the other side right there, he uses the kick on the right leg to pop the right hip down. And so when you push forward with the kick, it's gonna push the hip back. And so that's why kicking helps to shift the body from side to side. And so it's a relatively simple action, but it can have really big effect. And then right there, you can see the left leg finishes the kick there and that gets the body moving in the other direction. But it can save a lot of time, it can save a lot of energy, and it can really help for a more continuous stroke, which is gonna be a much more efficient stroke. And so it's a key skill, and you'll see when swimmers have to use either a buoy or especially a band, the rhythm of the stroke, their alignment, it all sort of suffers because they don't have the kicking action to help facilitate the rotational action. So right there with the right leg, pops the hip down, gets them to the other side, and then right there, the left leg pops him, gets him over to the left side. So it's a pretty simple action, and it's one that many swimmers can pick up intuitively, but for those that don't, they're really going to struggle to swim fluidly and swim efficiently. And even for the ones that sort of get it, the more they can really lock in on it and control it, the more effective they're going to be. So the legs obviously do provide propulsion, but just as importantly, they can help with the assistance of the rotation, and that's a key element of the stroke, and one that shouldn't be overlooked. So swimmers need to execute a whipping kicking action, and that can be facilitated by sitting the hips down a little bit so that they can drive the knee forward more. And it all starts with a straight leg recovery so that it sets up the reversal and the whip from the hip that goes to the knee and goes all the way to the foot, creates a lot of propulsion. And that action can be used to facilitate side-to-side -side rotation, which is a key function of the kick and helps create speed in backstroke. There are two key timing elements. The first is the timing of the rotation in the pull and the timing of the rotation in the arm recovery. We're going to discuss what's important to do and why it helps swimmers go fast. Let's dive in. So the first key concept is that rotation does not happen consistently throughout backstroke. It happens in spurts and it does so so that swimmers can optimally use the arms to create a lot of propulsion. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this particular the middle uh, section here. So if we see this Nike symbol on Aaron's hip, what we're going to do is watch how that moves or doesn't move as he goes through the pole. So it's staying in the exact same place, and then right at the end of the pole is where it finally moves. And so throughout the entire pole, there's very little rotation of the torso. From here all the way through, there's very little, and then there's a violent rotation at the end of the stroke. And so the reason for that is, in order to get the arm in an effective position to create a lot of propulsion and so that the strong muscles of the chest and the back can work, the shoulder has to be down, the body has to be rotated down. It doesn't have to be a lot, but it has to be a little bit. And so what you can do here is just try to rotate away and then see what position your hand ends up in and your arm ends up in, and it's not a strong one. So rather than rotating consistently and continually throughout the stroke, swimmers rotate as the hand goes in, you can see that his shoulder drops down and then he pulls and then he snaps through at the end after the arm pull happens and then the rotation itself is a violent quick switch to the other side. And so you can see here he's on his side, he's on his side and then boom switches to the other side and if you watch his other shoulder, now it's rotated down and he's ready and set up for the pull on the other side. So key idea is that there's a delay in the rotation through the pull and it's not until after the pull when backstrokers are going to rotate. So we'll watch the same thing with another athlete here. And you can see he's on his side here, pulling through, pulling through, pulling through, pulling through. There's been no rotation. And then right at the end, that's where you get that rotation. So the entire pull happens and then the rotation happens. So on his side, on his side, and then boom, that's where the rotation happens. So it's a delay in the rotation, it's not a continuous action. We'll watch one more swimmer here, just to show that it's not just a couple of swimmers that are doing this. So she's on her side, there's very little rotation, she pulls, you can watch the back of her suit, it's not moving at all. She's pulling, she's pulling, she's pulling, she's pulling, and then you get that shift, you see the back of her suit start to move. It's not until after she takes the pull, that it happens and we'll watch it on the other side stable 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 and then right here boom she switches out of it after she takes the pull and so again they're doing that for a reason they're doing it so that they can still have the forearm facing backwards and they can use the strongest muscles of their body to pull the arm straight back when they rotate away from it they can't use those muscles anymore and the pull is going to be a lot weaker 
So it's a key aspect of backstroke timing because it allows for an effective pull. And without an effective pull, it's going to be very difficult to create speed. So as we saw underwater, when swimmers are finishing their pull, there's a quick rotation to the other side. What I'd like to draw attention to now is how the recovery of the arm can also help facilitate that shift from side to side. So we've got one arm underwater finishing and getting the rotation to the other side. And then at the same time, the opposite arm is going to enter the water and that's going to drive the shoulders and the body to the other side as well. So if we watch here, just watch either side. You can see the arm goes in. And then they're driving the shoulder, driving the hand down into the water, and that switches them from side to side. So when they enter, boom, there's a big switch. And if you watch the athlete on the left, you can see her left arm is underwater. And then right there, it pops up right away. And you can see the same thing with the other athlete on the other side. Hand enters, and then boom, the other arm pops up out of the water. And so when those two actions are coupled, when the hand enters as the other hand finishes, it's going to help really help swimmers shift their body from side to side. And they're going to be able to do that without having to actually like think about and try to rotate their body. The momentum of the swinging arm, the momentum of the pulling arm, it just kind of snaps everything from side to side. And that allows them to quickly get in position to pull with the other arm. And so it's really important for the recoveries to be fast and aggressive so that they can facilitate the rotation from side to side in conjunction with what's happening underwater with the pull. So as we'll see here, the hand enters and he's getting on his side. He's using the arm recovery to drive into the water, to drive onto the other side. And he's pulling straight back and then rotating. And you can see on that other arm, slams into the water, drives the other shoulder to the bottom of the pool, and then gets the other hip up, the other shoulder up. And this is happening in a 50 backstroke race, pretty close to world record speed at the time. And he's still executing these same skills. Hand slams into the water. Gets him on his side, he pulls back without rotating, and the other arm is facilitating rotation on the other side. So even at speed, it's still happening. We'll take it one more look here, as this is a great view to see how both of these actions are happening at the same time. So she's pulling with her right arm here, she's staying on her side, and then at the end, she finishes the stroke and then enters on the left side, and you can see that quick rotation to the other side. Then she's staying on her side, and then snap through the finish, and the hand and so she quickly goes from on the left to on the right and so these actions are happening together and the more that the finish of the stroke and the entry of the other arm can help switch from side to side it's going to help that transition and that's going to allow swimmers to get into a position to pull back effectively like she is right here and then she can quickly once the pull's done switch to the other side and now she's in a position to pull effectively on the other side and then bam switch again to the other side so rotation is ultimately pretty simple. Swimmers have to stay on their side a little bit longer so that they can really optimize and maximize the pull. The drawback of doing so is that now they have to quickly switch to the other side because they've taken so much time to be on that one side, but they can do that by timing the finish of the stroke to pop the hips over, and then also using the recovery of the opposite arm to drive the shoulders down into the water. And that's gonna help the swimmer, when done at the same time, quickly snap over to the other side, and when they can do that, they're going to be able to swim a lot faster, which is what we're looking for. The two key skills that swimmers need to master in order to minimize drag to optimize their speed and backstroke. So swimmers need to maintain great horizontal alignment. They need to be horizontal in the water as they move through the water. And they need to maintain great lateral alignment in terms of not swaying side to side, again, as they move through the water. If swimmers can optimize and improve these two skills, they're going to swim faster even if they don't improve the amount of propulsion they create. Alignment is so important because it's like removing the brakes. And so the better swimmers can maintain their alignment as they move through the water, the less resistance they'll create, the less speed they'll lose, and ultimately the faster they'll swim. Let's check out what these key skills look like. The first key skill is maintaining horizontal alignment. So swimmers want to be level in the water and move through the water as smoothly as possible. So one of the mistakes that you'll see is swimmers swim with a really high head position, which is going to drive the hips really low. So in this athlete, you can see, you can see his cap. You can even see that the writing on the cap, he's keeping his head down and in line. If that head was up and out of the surface of the water, that's going to create a problem with alignment. It's going to drive the hips down, which is going to create a lot more resistance as that swimmer moves through the water. The other issue you can sometimes see is swimmers do the opposite and they really press their head down and they press the back of their shoulders down into the water really far and that creates a huge arch in the back as they move through the water. 
that too is going to create a lot of resistance and it's going to make it a lot more difficult for swimmers to create speed. So the principle is simple. Swimmers want to stay as level as possible and they want to keep their spine as straight as possible as they move through the water. They don't want to arch their back by lifting the chest up to the ceiling and they don't want to lift the head which is going to push the hips down towards the bottom of the pool. Both of those actions are going to create a lot more resistance and create a lot more drag. So again, keep it simple and swimmers just want to maintain a position that's moving through the water as horizontal as possible and as smoothly as possible. Almost like the shape of a hull in a boat, it's going to have a small rounded position and they want to just slide right through in order to create as little resistance as possible to create as much speed as possible. The second major alignment issue that backstrokers may often struggle with is that of lateral alignment. And so when viewed from over top or from underneath, you'll see swimmers moving side to side, starting with the head, then that will cause the shoulders to move side to side, which is going to cause the hips to move side to side, and all of a sudden they're wiggling their way down the pool. And that's going to create a ton of resistance, it's going to create a ton of drag, and it's going to really slow them down. And where this usually comes from, sometimes it's just that the swimmers really struggle to keep their head still, but a lot of times it comes from the arm recoveries. And so what we'll watch here is two swimmers who do have excellent arm recoveries, and you can see how the hands enter about shoulder width or maybe even a little bit wider, and that's going to minimize the amount of lateral alignment issues that they have. Now just imagine that these arms are coming over the top and they're entering way behind the head. So the momentum of the arm is going to move the head to the side, it's going to move the shoulders to the side, and that's going to lead to the hips moving from side to side and cause all sorts of problems. So really great lateral alignment often comes from having really clean and really direct arm recovery. So you can see in these swimmers, they're coming right over the top, the hand is entering about shoulder width or maybe a little bit wider. And again, that's going to minimize the amount of side-to-side -side motion. You can see these swimmers, both of them, their head's really stable, the shoulders are really stable, and they're not moving side-to-side. -side. And a lot of that is being driven by really clean and really effective arm recoveries. So if swimmers are struggling to keep everything straightforward, in alignment, usually the first thing to look for is to look for the arm recoveries. If they're out of line, if they're off, it's going to cause a lot of problems with lateral alignment, and that's going to create a ton of resistance. It's going to make the head move, it's going to make the shoulders move, it's going to make the hips move, and that's going to cause all sorts of problems. Not only does it cause resistance problems and create more drag, it's going to make it more difficult to create an effective pull because there's not going to be a stable platform to initiate that pull from, which again is just going to make the problem worse. Swimmers need to really make sure that they're keeping that head stable, and they need to make sure that they're recovering the arms effectively, or they're going to run into all sorts of problems. So we'll take a look at lateral alignment here again from under the surface. So you can see a swimmer that's doing a really good job of it. And we'll talk about what could go wrong and what that might look like. And so if you see here, the hands are entering right on top of the shoulders. It's really direct. It's really straight. Again, hand is entering right above the shoulders. Now, if you watch a swimmer's head, it's not moving around much. It's staying really stable. And if you watch the hips, they're rotating, but they're not moving side to side they're really stable as well. And then same thing with the shoulders. So because there's no lateral torque coming in from the arms, causing the head or anything to move side to side, everything stays really stable. Everything stays really direct. And so this swimmer is not creating any unnecessary drag by moving the head side to side, by moving the shoulders side to side, moving the hips side to side and disrupting lateral alignment. They're doing a really good job of entering directly and making sure that everything is moving forwards as opposed to side to side. And as a result, they're going to create a lot less resistance, which is going to create a lot more speed, and it's going to improve their endurance because they're using less energy to move forward, which is going to allow for more energy to be used to create speed. So backstroke alignment is ultimately simple. Swimmers need to stay level, and they need to move directly through the surface. Once you identify what the real issue is, it becomes pretty simple to get swimmers in the right position. They just need to get their head in line horizontally. They need to avoid arching the back and pressing the shoulders back into the water. And they need to make sure that their arm recoveries are direct so that they're not causing any sort of lateral issues. As with most skills, creating change is going to be a lot easier and a lot more effective when you take a simple approach to what's happening when swimmers move through the water. So I hope that was helpful. And as always, keep it simple.